The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... ingenuity and courage, the greatest helping hand is chance. The alarm of a sentry, the bark of a dog, the wrong turning, any could spell death or life. Worth exploring? Mysterious enough for you? I think so. Lolo, what stupid mistake brought you to this prison camp? Marshal, don't make me tell you. It still gives me nightmares. Do you have any ideas how we could get out of here? I have escaped from Berg prison camp and from Lubeck. Uh, so Scharnhorst couldn't be any harder. How do you start? My method is simple. Make friends, make observation, and make haste. Comprenez? drama, Breakout, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agat Jr. and stars Paul Hecht and Bob Caliban. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Well, and start your mornings with a double dose of laughter on CBS television, beginning with the Jeffersons. Here's how this is a bar down here, and there's another woman in this world who will stick by me the way she has. You ain't not. The laughs continue with us. Here's the first item up for bids, and the price is right. Join Bob Barker and for an hour of excitement and fabulous prizes. It's the Jeffersons, Alice, and the Price is Right. Weekdays on CBS Television. Hi. Hope you got what I need. What's wrong? Pain, itch, you know, hemorrhoids. Been driving my truck all day, and I need Preparation H. Right. Gives lots of people temporary relief. Its special ingredients relieve pain and itch flare-ups. Helps shrink swelling of inflamed hemorrhoidal tissue. That's real medicine. I'll take ointment and suppositories. Hi. Feeling better today? Oh, thanks to you, good buddy. Preparation H relieves pain and itch. Helps shrink swelling. Use only as directed. Another shell. He scored a direct hit on my tail. I could 
see the black smoke of a 105. That meant I'd no hope of staying aloft. Wing over, stick forward. A split is into a dive and headed for the trees. Unfortunately, behind the German lines. And that, my dear Roland, is how I am prisoner here in Scharnhorst once again. <laughs> and what stupidity brought you here, mon ami? Don't make me tell you, Marcel. It still gives me nightmares. Besides, do you really want to know? Uh, no, what I really wish to know is what idea have you to get us out of here? Let me see. I've broken out of Berg prison and out of Lübeck. So how could Schoenhorst be any harder? My method is simple. Make friends, make observation, and make haste. Each of us, every day on the lookout, and at night, we compare notes. Make friends, eh? There is a Russian prisoner here, Nikolai, someone. He didn't tell me his last name. He's been here a long time. Yesterday, he winked at me and whispered he knows a way out. Why hasn't he escaped then? <laughs> Good question, but... He didn't tell me. Don't be too sure this Nikolai will help a Frenchman. Russians have never forgiven us for Napoleon. What is it, Nikolai? I saw you motioning to me in the yard. You wish to show me something in this corridor? To begin, Lieutenant Marshal, I have admired your exploits as pilot for the whole war. You've been in Scharnhorst here for the whole war? Ah, uh, bad luck, yes. Lieutenant, stand here with me in front of this door until the guard goes around the corner. Uh, good, he's gone. Look, I have keys for the door. A storeroom. I open. Come inside, quick. Uh, look, other side. Window, not much barred. Uh, I lock door so no one away are here. Lieutenant, look out from window. It's freedom. Yes. I've cut through bars much thicker than this before. I get Lieutenant fire. I help. Every night after roll call, I open this door. You fire bars. Soon you are free. Very tempting, Nikolai, but why are you helping me? For great Elliot, or I must do this. You wish me to keep fire for you tonight? I'll talk to you tomorrow, Nikolai. Tomorrow? Why waste one day? A night to think it over does not waste a day. Uh, that Russian. Do you know what I saw, Roland, not ten meters from the window of the storeroom? A sentry. I could see his shadow over at one side. Now you know, mon ami. He wanted you shot trying to escape. You know, I've been thinking, Marshal. This Schoenhorst prison is too guarded to escape over a wall. However, I had a plan. We simply walk out one evening. Walk out? Disguised as German officers. <laughs> our uniforms would give us away. For one thing, our great coats are blue, the Germans wear gray. We change the color. First, we have to be very sick in order to get ourselves admitted to the prison hospital. Once inside, we find some permanganates to bleach our coats. Why not? When do we start? Right now. Both of us have this very bad attack of dysentery. You make noise, I make noise. <laughs> Success. We stayed in the hospital a few days. When we were cured of dysentery, we took with us enough permanganate of potash to bleach a battalion. Then we made a strong solution, dumped in the coats, which we soaked and scrubbed until our French blue coats became German gray. Then we made buttons out of wood, painted them greenish bronze, and sewed them on. Now, where's the needle and thread? Please, here. Okay, what are you doing? I am making German officers' caps. 
You see, first I cut the cardboard to make a frame, and uh, then I had better measure your head for yours, Oberleutnant. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> I am proud of our cleverness. Yes, then all I need is some cloth to cover the caps, and in the front, a kind of metal insignia that they wear. It won't be so easy. Yes, tonight, after roll call, you and I will take a little walk and make a search for cloth. We'll also look for some metal and something out of which we could carve what looks like a saber for each of us. You're forgetting something. I am? If we're German officers of rank, we should have a wide red stripe around the cap. Yes. Uh, how about red flannel? Yes. Like our Colonel Wales. You're not going to take the Colonel's red flannel underwear from him? No, oh no, I wouldn't be so cruel. The Colonel is going to give it to me gladly. <laughs> We stay in the shadows and move along the wall. None of the sentries will see us. Let me go to our shopping list. Two saddles, or their equivalent. Some shiny metal for insignia. Cloth for caps. And the colonel's underwear. Behind this building is a clothesline. And if we're lucky, we might find hanging on it some cloth. Do you see what I see? I do. And it's ours. Here, Honor, stuff these gray trousers under your shirt. I have another surprise for you. If we're going to walk out the wagon house gate, underneath our uniforms, we'll need civilian clothing. I've got it. Just stand to one side. I leave this door. What is that rolled up in that hole? What is it? What have you hidden? Civilian clothing, I told you. Put the stone back. Two suits and a felt hat. You carried all that from Booth to Lubeck to Scharnhorst? Somebody had to think of these things. Now, where do we go? We keep moving alongside this building. Walk by that window. Somebody might be inside there and see you. The lights are on. It's the German officer's mess. Oh, no. Take a good look at those tables in there. What do you see? Very nice china and napkins. And on the tables, beautiful silverware. Huh? Oh. Look at the elaborate design, particularly the knives. Of course. The handles of those knives would look perfect on our officer's caps. Shall we go in through this window? Certainly not. Through the door. Eh, too bad. The outside door is locked. We'll have to try opening the window. Up. And it opens. Now, when I get inside, I'll take two knives and anything else I think might be useful. Roland, keep watch. Oui. Here I go. What are you doing? Who are you? Uh, Ancel Marshal, French Air Force, mon colonel. Oh, yeah, I thought you were here. What are you doing in our mess hall at this time of night? Mon colonel, there is danger. Danger? What danger? Uh, mon colonel, you may know I have just recovered from a severe case of dysentery. Uh, the doctor told me it is everywhere in Scharnhorst. I was just examining the napkins to see if there were germs. Hmm. One can see dysentery germs? I was looking to see how recently the napkins were washed. Are you sure? Uh, take the matter of one's own underwear, mon colonel. Within 48 hours of putting on underwear, which has been laundered in the prison, dysentery strikes. Marshal, I'm going to my quarters, examine my underclothing, and bring them to you. You go to your quarters immediately, Lieutenant. I shall be there directly. Mon colonel, room number seven. Bring your underclothing. I will be happy to take care of it. But 
We ran to our quarters with two knives, two barrel staves, and a pair of great trousers. Minutes later, the colonel came in with his red flannel underwear, which we cut into red ribbons for the officers' caps, sewed on the gray cloth, the knife handles, and carved the staves into severs, staining them with black shoe polish. The work of one night. But it took over a month before we managed to forge identity papers with first names. By February the 14th, Le Longueros and I were dressed in our imitation uniforms and ready to leave. Achtung! Herr Marshal, stand at attention when your general speaks to you. That is the most unbelieving German accent I've ever heard, Orlo. Now, I am going to be the colonel. I'm fluent in German, and the less you say, Rollo, the better. Now, I will call you Oberleutnant. And that suits me. I was only trying to help. Yes. Now, there are three sentries one has to pass at the Wagenhaus gate. We have to be out of Scharnhorst, rid of our uniforms, and at the Magdenburg station in time to catch the 6.30 train. Moshel, your coat fits you like a glove. Well, it should. It's my own. Bleached, but still my own. Yours doesn't fit so well, or no. You seem to have put on weight. Uh, what time is it? Half past five. Where shall we go? It's just starting to get dark. Where are the suits we are going to wear as civilians? I'm wearing both of them under my coat. That's why I look so fat. Your sever strapped tightly? Oui. And our papers, you have yours? I have mine. I hope they work. And Rollo, remember, I do the talking. <laughs> takes bluff, assurance, and a good deal of daring to break out from a prison camp in wartime, especially during World War I, when it was one's duty to try to escape, a matter of honor, particularly those ace flyers of the French Air Force, who in those days could not be replaced. War in the skies from 1914 to 1918 was in its infancy, and one man in prison might turn the tide of battle. I shall return shortly with Act Two. What do doctors recommend to avoid constipation? These days, doctors stress the importance of fiber in the diet. Food fiber that helps the system regulate itself naturally. Metamucil is the laxative made from natural fiber. No chemical stimulants. So for occasional constipation, doctors recommend Metamucil more often than any other laxative. The way to overcome constipation is the natural way. But if not nature, Metamucil. Read, label, and follow directions. True Value Hardware Store's February Tool Value of the Month is a hand tool of striking quality. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you it's the professional quality master mechanic curved claw hammer for just $4.99. Its heat-treated high-carbon steel head is held securely in place by a technique called the living wedge that expands and contracts with the hickory handle. And right now, the professional quality master mechanic curved claw hammer is just $4.99 while supplies last at participating True Value Hardware Stores. Hello, this is Ann Miller. As I am speaking, intensive research is going on from coast to coast. Research sponsored by the March of Dimes in its fight against birth defects. A doctor in San Diego asked why women who smoke during pregnancy have more low birth weight babies. Also, a young woman researcher in North Carolina probes the genetic factors and disorders involving cholesterol. A Colorado scientist seeks the prevention of fetal growth retardation by studying how hormones act in the uterus. And this is only a small part of the scientific research being done by March of Dimes grantees who received over $9 million last year to probe birth defects, causes, and prevention. It is a long and very difficult road, but it is a road that must be traveled to ensure our next generation's good health. So please get to the March of Dimes to make the road a little smoother, that goal, good health for all, a little nearer. In the annals 
Troubles of World War I, The Escape from Scharnhorst Prison by Lieutenant Anselm Marshall and Ace Flyer Roland Garros has never been equaled. Disguised as German officers at twilight, they approach the first sentry. Every passing minute is against them. If they are not on that 6.30 train, their absence will be discovered and the escape will fail. Art! What is loose? Art? I said halt. I heard you. Stand up straight, soldier. What kind of a sentry are you? You see, Herr Oberleutnant, what a riffraff. They send us for a prison camp. Yeah, yeah. Don't cop. Don't you know enough to salute the superior officer? I shall report you to the general. Come along, Oberleutnant. I apologize for this doom cop. Let us hope we have more discipline at the front. How long? This time I start talking before we get to the second century. You follow my lead. Me, me. I tell you, Herr Oberleutnant, it is insufferable that a German colonel like myself should be hooted at by this some thousand prisoners in the middle of an inspection tour. Yeah, yeah. I say it is our duty to go to Herr General and inform him that his staff is being mocked at every turn. Uh, please, sentry. Sentry, pull up the barrier like a good man. Danke schön. Uh, you agree, Herr Oberleutnant? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. We got past the second century, eh? Oh, no. Only one to go. Keep nodding just the way you're doing. That is perfect. <laughs> I was saying to Herr General this morning, I said, Herr General, if we do not have complete discipline in Scharnhorst, where do we have it? I will ask a few steps over this footbridge and across the moat. The only way to beat the enemy is discipline. Von Monsky said it. Clausewitz said it. This country is going to give us trouble, I can tell. And Herr General himself said it to me just this morning. You see, Herr Oberleutnant, now this sentry is more experienced. Notice the way he stands. He knows how to follow instructions. Papers, please. Pass. Bitte. Your papers. Now, this is the third time we've been asked for those stupid papers. How do you think we got this far, sentry? But I must see papers. If you think, sentry, that on a cold night in February, we are going to unbutton our coats to show our papers? You are very much mistaken. Open the gates, Marshal. Uh, Herr Oberleutnant, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, here we have an example of following instructions too carefully. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's cold. I hope no one can see us standing here by the railroad tracks. Now, time to change our clothes. What time is it, Rollo? We have 15 minutes before the train leaves, Martin. Oh, what a night to get undressed. I'm happy to get out of this uniform, useful as it was, and end my brief career in a German army. Oh, we... Sabers, caps, coats, everything. Roll them up together. See if we can find a good place to hide them. There's a drain under the tracks. I can stuff them in there. Oh, my dear, it's cold. You weren't so stupid to wear both civilian suits, Rollo. Let me have mine. I hope it fits. I have found a gap for you. No, no, give me the hat. For me. Try to remember who brought the civilian clothing in the first place. You're no longer our German colonel giving orders. <laughs> You're right, Rollo. You are right. What are you doing? Putting my ear to the tracks. No, nothing yet. The train must be late. There. And how do I look, Rollo? You are more impressive as a German colonel. Thank you. I like your outfit, like a typical German peasant. Hey, dear, shall we stroll to the Magdenburg station? We've been on 
this train six hours, Marshal. When do we reach Cologne? I'm not sure. I hope we're going in the right direction. The train's stopping. I cannot see a thing out the window. Oh, yes, I do. Something with that, Jack. I, uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, does this happen often, uh, the train stopping like this? Holy try, Police, let's jump it while there's time. <laughs> If they are stopping all the trains. Uh, nobody knows who we are. The old man who sat across from us, he was looking at me very strangely. Roland, don't ask for trouble before it comes. And those dogs? Is that imagination also? You're right, they're after us. We are two very well-known French flyers. The Germans would do anything to keep us from getting back into the air. Down below there. You see that farmhouse? Shall we head for it? I will be asleep. We could go hide in the barn. We haven't much choice. The dogs are getting closer. Wait. S- someone has just lit a candle in the house. They're opening the door. It's a woman. She's standing there, looking out. I trust the woman. Let's run for the house. <laughs> What are you doing here? Uh, are you Germans? Uh, no, madame. We are not German. We are French. My friend and I have escaped from Chambord. Yes, quickly, come with me. Up this ladder to the attic. I heard the dogs. I know. I'll go first and open this trap door. You're going to hide us? You a German woman? I hide anyone who flees from war. I hate war. Madame, are you alone in this farmhouse? Almost. My father and my uncle and two older brothers were called up. In the attic where I'll hide you, I have hidden Hans, my my younger brother. Now, we we talk later. Follow me up this ladder. Hans? Hans, it's me, Renata. Wake up. Hans, hold the trap door open. I'm bringing some friends. We shall wait up here in the attic until they have given up and taken the dogs away. Won't they come to your farmhouse? No, no. If it's the police from our town, they know about Hans, so they, they let us alone. Your brother doesn't say much. He is afraid. He will talk when he knows you better. You see, he is not very well. But he is good with animals. When they came to draft him into the army, I hid him here in the attic. He has been here through the whole war? For four years. Since the Kaiser, since Germany declared war. But, madame, we are your enemy. We are friends. And you cannot understand why I hide you from my own people. No, I cannot. My country went to war against you. You are only defending yourselves. Now, we will talk later. The dogs have gone. Now, you must both be hungry. Hans, I'm taking my two friends down to the kitchen to give them some food. Now, you go back to sleep. All right? Madame, the food was magnificent. I thank you very, very much. Until we reach the frontier, we will not be sleeping at night, so I'm going to catch some sleep now while I can. Uh, Roland, are you uh, coming up? I'm really not tired, Marcel. I'll stay down here for a while. Very well. Uh, thank you again, madame, for giving us a chance to catch our breath. Do you think you can open the trap door alone? Oh, yes. I have opened quite a few in the last year. Uh, good night, madame. Bonsoir, Roland. Uh. It's so foolish. I, I don't know your name. I don't know yours. Roland Garros. Renata Maya. Enchanté. <laughs> we have uh, kept you up this night. I apologize. Oh, I heard the dogs. I was afraid for my brother. Uh, wh- what is your friend's name? Anselm Marshall. He is also a flyer in our air service. A lieutenant. Oh. I have never been in an airplane. It must be wonderful to fly. <laughs> it's not so romantic the way you think it is. I, I am a soldier, which means I deal in death. You, you shoot from an airplane? Oui, I do. I, I wish you would not talk about shooting and, and killing. 
It is almost daylight to think. Twelve hours ago, I had no idea that a woman, supposedly my enemy, was here running a farm. Where will I be twelve hours from now? Oh, you are escaping to Holland? Oui. Oh, to fight again? Oui, I must. Will you remember me? What a silly question. Remember you. Do not admire your enemy who hates war? My friend who hates war. Perhaps after the war I might visit you and you will teach me how to milk a cow. Frau Meyer! Frau Meyer! Go up to the attic. Hurry. I'll tell you when they are gone. Frau Meyer! Then break down the door. What are you doing here? Who, who are you? We are looking for two French prisoners who have escaped from Shanghai. Oh, there are no prisoners here. And where does this letter go? Oh, that. Just to a storeroom. You are sure? To the attic. There's nothing up there. Hmm. We shall see. Good. Hold this letter. I'm going up. But you're wasting your time. There's nothing. I shall look for myself. <laughs> Good shot. You've killed them both. Yes, I heard them. I couldn't risk their finding us or your brother, madame. We can stay now. Someone will have heard the shots, and they'll be here soon. You killed them to save Hans? No, no. We must leave now, immediately. But we can't go without hiding the bodies. If someone comes and finds the dead soldiers, they will accuse one another. I'm killing this one. You get that one. Madame, wash this floor carefully. Clean off any blood. You heard nothing. You know nothing. Ready, Marshal? Ready. I have got this one. Now, if you walk in a straight line past the two oak trees, you'll come to an old stone quarry. No one will look there. Thank you. Take care of Hans. Perhaps we shall meet again. Mm -hmm. Another... Au revoir. Au revoir. I pray for you both that the war is short. Down through the ages, hasn't that been the prayer of wives, mothers, and sweethearts? That the war be short and the loved ones return home. You wonder, will there always be wars? Will civilization ever outgrow the need for destruction? Or as Napoleon himself has said, we are doomed forever to repeat our follies. For war is the business of barbarians. I shall return shortly with Act Three. One Valentine's Day, when I was younger, a boy gave me my first Valentine candy. I would have married him then and there, except I was eight and he was seven. Even today, every February 14th, I get all sentimental when Jeff gives me one of those beautiful Whitman samples, or a great big romantic Valentine heart filled with delicious Whitman chocolates. It may sound corny, but Valentine's just isn't Valentine's for me until Jeff shows up with that Whitman's heart. I'm Della Reese, here to help you warm up those lunchtime sandwiches. They always eat better. When you remember the soup, kids always warm up to Campbell's chicken noodle soup. Mm, and tender chicken, golden chickeny broth, and noodles of noodles. So warm up that sandwich. Give them the golden goodness of Campbell's chicken noodle soup. Because they always eat better. When you remember the soup. And it's right on your shelf, remember? Every cigarette smoker can stop. Don't care how long or how much you smoked, how many times you've fallen off the wagon and tried to crawl back on, or how changed you may think you are to your cigarettes. So here's some tips on how to get loose from cigarettes. 
First, believe in yourself. Then, begin to carry your cigarettes in a different place. Switch your brand of cigarettes at least twice a week. Don't carry matches or a lighter. Challenge yourself each morning by jotting down how many cigarettes you think you need. And at night, how many you actually smoke. Don't get crippled in your best years by heart disease. Get some help. Quit smoking. Call the American Heart Association and put your money where your heart is. Give to the American Heart Association. They're fighting for your life. French air aces of World War I have been captured by and escaped from the Germans. Dressed as civilians bombed out of their homes, they head for neutral Holland. There is danger at every turn, for any French officer caught out of uniform will be shot as a spy. Roland Garros and Anselm Marshall hurry towards an abandoned quarry, carrying two dead men. Tis the quarry. It's filled with water and pieces of ice down there. Over your door, my friend! Your turn, my friend. Now what? There may be a workman's train out of the nearest town, which will get us to Cologne. Then, extra chapelle. Cologne, yes. Such a big city, no one will be able to dress us. From this quarry, which way? Common sense tells me. Find the railroad tracks, follow them, and they generally lead you to a station. Can we hide? Uh, the crowds will hide us. <laughs> Obviously, these people never go to bed. You wouldn't think Germany was at war. Well, I wonder if the shops are open. Shops? For what? I want to buy some chocolate. From Cologne to Aix-la-Chapelle is quite a distance. And who knows how long before we get a meal like that German woman gave us last night. <laughs> And I must buy a hat. A hat? Yes, I'm not comfortable in this grubby, ill-fitting cap that you gave me. I'm not going into any hat store with you tonight. And who asked you to? I can pick out my own hat. At 11 at night? You're going to find somewhere to buy a hat here in Colonia? Someone's going to run. Mon ami, please, you don't know the mentality of the German. That is exactly the kind of thing that he would do. Where are we? This is the Ringstrasse. The shopping center is that way. The cathedral is over there. Uh, see those two spires? Three. Really? That is where you will wait for me. In the cathedral? Oui, monsieur. On your knees, praying for my safety. And when I return, I'll pray for yours. <laughs> That was easy to buy. There are machines everywhere. You put in your clinic and out comes the chocolate. But to find a hat store open for business was a little more difficult. But I found one, purchased a Homburg, and started back towards the cathedral. But I was being followed. Every time I would stop, so would whoever was following me. If I could only get as far as the cathedral, I might escape out the back way. <laughs> Who would arrest one in a cathedral? Where were you? It's been over an hour. It's one o'clock. I've been followed. Keep your eyes straight ahead of you. Don't look at me. You don't know me. I'm a stranger sitting in a pew next to you. What are you going to do? You must separate. No point in you getting arrested as well. Now, you go to Aix-la-Chapelle. If in two days I am not at the front of the platform where the baggage is unloaded, if I am not there in two days at this time, make your way alone into Holland. You still have the compass? And the map. Oui. Bonne chance, mon ami. I am leaving now. Don't get up. Mein Herr, was? Bitte, 
I moment, I don't know who you are, but surely you have better manners than to engage in conversation in our beautiful cathedral. If you wish to talk, we shall go outside. Natalie. I mean you no harm. I wish to ask you a question only, a simple question. Oh, I, I thought you were a thief. I saw you in the ring, Strasser, and I said to myself, that beautiful head. Tell me where I can buy such a head. <laughs> And I met as planned and arrived at Aix La Chapelle. On our map, Aix La Chapelle was 16 kilometers from the frontier. Beyond that, Holland. We started walking. Oh, it's even cold after night. In the evening, I broke out of front horses. Yes, what I, what I wouldn't give for my old army top coat now, eh? And the fur lined overalls. Oh, and the boots. And the fur lined helmet. You know you don't have signs, says my friend? It's an arrow. It says Tivoli. Ah, boy, we are heading the right way. Stop a minute. Here. I just kick something. What is it? It's a flashlight. Let me see. Uh, only issue. That means a patrol passed here recently and one of the soldiers dropped it. Oh, it works. Now I can check our compass and the map even if the moon is not out. Roll up, roll up. Put it out. Quick. What is it? There was, there was a flash of light up there. I can make out the house. What's that? What's that sound? It's, it's water. A river. Look, look here. That light came from a house on the other side of a bridge. I, I see the bridge now. That means guards, and guards means show us your papers. Uh, we do better to climb down to the edge of the river and then look for a place where it's not too wide, where we could jump across. Yes, a very narrow place. If I fell in, and that right now, I'd be one solid six-foot icicle. Well, don't you think the currents are too strong here? Let's try another place. Look, we spent two hours looking, Apollo, and this is the narrowest point of the river. There are large flat stones all the way across. We can walk on those. Perhaps you can, but I can't. Oh, I need to leave me. Absolutely. I cannot. I'll shine my flashlight on those stones. You see? Covered in ice. Not more than 25 feet to the other side. We must try while it's still dark. I can't do it, Marshal. Oh, I'll go first. Go on. I'll watch you. I'll, I'll take this, this branch for balance. The water is not very deep. Deep enough. Go ahead. If you can get to the other side, well, maybe I can. Hey, I can take off walking. Yeah, I told you I could. They are halfway across already. Right. Oh, someone on the other side. I'm coming back. Hey! It's not so easy to turn around. Hey, I'm falling. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sinking. Oh, no. I'm right here. Get out of my head. Oh, no. You go. That sentry isn't on the other side. He's behind us, coming down the riverbank. Hold on to me, oh, my shit. Get us across. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I, I, I find I'm just a little cold. He's nowhere near us. Probably can't see us. No, sir. Just two more stones to step back. Oh, we made it. Now, he can possibly see us over here. So cold, so cold. We'll be on our way as soon as I can catch my breath. Have to crawl in all fours, all right? Yes, that, that will warm me up. Ah, you see, Rolo, you can get across the river if you have to. I'm even carrying a big bagage like you. I don't know how I did it. I can't even swim. Flashlight still working. 
I'll check the canvas to see if it's still heading west. Look, there's a light over there. It blinked on and off. The side. There's another. Halfway up that hill up to the left. Very bright. I say, Sam, the sparring, it's... I've never been so wet and so cold. My friend, it's snow. It started to snow, yes. Look, there's another light blinking on and off. A signal. You hear that? We've been spotted. The woods are filled with soldiers. Can you look at the compass under your jacket? So no light will show. I have more than me. Oh, I have traveled around in a complete circle. Oh, no. All those kilometers. And that village down below there is Metro. Metro is less than two kilometers from X la chapelle And that strong light up on the hill. And the guardhouse we tried to avoid at the head of the bridge. The snow is really coming down now. Roland, let us stand up like men, find the road, and walk back to Aix la Chapelle. Start all over again? Oui, mon ami, on another day. We're both too exhausted to get to the frontier now. We're still 16 kilometers from Holland. And we've traveled half that distance tonight in a circle. The next day, the sun was out. We persuaded a tavern owner to serve us a complete meal without food tickets at double the price. Our stomachs filled. Ten hours later, we found ourselves two kilometers from the border. Directly ahead, we should see a building brightly lit. Yes, what would that be? A factory in Holland. Holland? <laughs> there must be a guardhouse somewhere here. Maybe behind that tall hedge. They wouldn't leave this part of the frontier unguarded. Back on our bellies to crawl up to that hedge and have a look. Slowly, slowly. We oui, mon I can see a road and I can also see footprints. So the sentries must walk up and down here, huh? Oh, will you look at this? Very clever, these Germans. What is it? Woven through the hedge is barbed wire to keep you from crawling through. And look, along the roots, a tulip wire. Probably sets off an alarm if you touch it. The hedge is only five feet high. You are thinking what I'm thinking? That we could jump it? If we got off to a good running start. Yes, and if we aren't spotted, I don't want to tear my hands and face on the barbed wire, only to be shot on the other side for my trouble. Let's back up a good 30 feet, right to the edge of the woods. Get on your mark. Get ready, get set, and go. Down the hill, all the way, all the way. We made it. We're here, safe. Oh, Holland, I love you. Let me kiss your earth. and I took a train for The Hague, a ship to England, and then back to Boulogne for reassignment to our squadrons. Then, I lost track of him. I have often wondered if Roland ever went back to that farmhouse in Germany to learn how to milk a cow. of history, Roland Garros died in the air, in combat, in flames, one month before the armistice on October 15, 1918. Lieutenant Marshall also gave his life for France. Both pilots knew that to try when there is little hope 
is to risk failure. Not to try at all is to guarantee it. I shall return shortly. I love old-fashioned things. Antique clocks, handmade quilts, traditional things like that. So last Valentine's Day, when Bill gave me this big Whitman's Valentine heart, I couldn't believe it. It was just packed with delicious Whitman's chocolate. And it was so lacy, so old-fashioned, so me. Give a little old-fashioned happiness this February 14th with a Whitman sampler or Valentine heart. Whitman's, making hearts happy for 139 Valentine's Days. Cyril introduces Mr. Buster Crab, film actor and author of Buster Crab's arthritis exercise book. I wrote a book on relieving arthritis pain, and I recommend new Icy Hot Cream in the tube. Rub it on. Icy Hot's penetrating warmth reaches way down inside to help relieve minor pain, while a feeling of coolness soothes your skin. I'm convinced that new Greaseless Icy Hot Cream will give you fast, effective relief that lasts for hours. Use only as directed. Like Minute Maid Orange Juice, some things never change. Kids. I'm too old to kiss you, Dad. Can't we shake hands? And father's too old. I still kiss my father. Oh, Dad, that's different. The great taste of Minute Maid Orange Juice is never going to change. It's always 100% pure. And we'll be making that same delicious taste when your kids have kids. Take sure of the taste. Make it me. We don't limit ourselves to whodunits or even why did they do it. Frequently, we delve into the mystery of what makes people tick. How do they meet the odds of life and overcome them? And courage, after all, is not in blindly overlooking danger, but in seeing it and conquering it. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Bob Caliban, Bryna Rayburn, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Main chapter, script 28, scene 27, take 2. Action! First, Mrs. Fluett, you tell me your husband drives a truck. Then I find out you live in this fantastic house in very exclusive Encero Beach. Come on, Mace, none of this is in the script. I, I just must have been thinking about something. You want to take a break? No, 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 no. It's, it's okay. I'll be all right. Um, uh, let's take it again. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. WK.